Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? I, I don't think that this should come as any tremendous surprise, but there were moments throughout the season where we, we sort of knew the writing was on the wall. Back on October the 6th, P. Carmichael met with the media, and look, he 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 fell on the sword and took blame for the struggles uh, in the with the offense up until that point. Okay. Um, just trust me that uh, he did. <laughs> and uh, Den do you have Dennis Allen? Okay, play, play Dennis Allen. This was Dennis Allen a day before uh, October the 5th when he was asked about P. Carmichael and Derek Carr. Yeah, we're focused on putting together a good plan for New England. Um, I feel great about what we've done so far. We're going to keep working extremely hard to put our guys in the best position to be successful. Uh, we're studying the heck out of New England, both offensively, defensively, and in the kicking game. And you know, and then we'll, we'll go out there Sunday and, and, and uh, have a good plan and go, go attack them. Um, and there were moments throughout the season, obvious, look, that he mentioned New England. That was a nice bounce back for the Saints when they came back and beat New England. Of course, they, they blew the lead in, in Green Bay. They played Tampa, had maybe their worst game of the year, and then a week later went on the road and, uh, and played really well against New England and, and shut out the Patriots. Now, the Patriots were a terrible football team this year, but they had those moments, and of course, the Saints did finish strong. But there were also other moments, like when Derek Carr and Pete Carmichael had their outburst on the sideline back in the middle of October. Here was Derek Carr after that. I apologize to Pete, actually, on the airplane. Cause I, wasn't, I was talking to Pete, but I wasn't talking about Pete. Um, uh, Pete and I know exactly what I was talking about um, and why. And, um, you know, when the, when the game's on the line, you know, that's when you have to be on every detail of your assignment. And I was a little upset at some of those things and so it had nothing had nothing to do with Pete it, he just happened to be the one that walked up when I was a little, a little angry um there was a lot of that this year you know I, we're gonna have Jeff Duncan with us in hour three and um and I'm really excited to talk to Jeff first because Jeff this morning is the one who first tweeted that it was going to be a busy day on 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 airline drive uh, clearly alluding to to what transpired. But Jeff also literally wrote the book on the Peyton Breeze era. Um, and as a result, I'm curious, you know, what Jeff thinks about Pete Carmichael's role in the offense over these last two decades. I mean, like literally, Jeff Duncan wrote the book, Peyton and Breeze, The Men Who Built the Greatest Offense in NFL History. He doesn't include Pete Carmichael in the title. So, how much, how much, how much, how significant was Pete Carmichael's role? I, I'll, we'll get Jeff Duncan's thoughts on that. Um, and also, you know, what direction they may go next. I mean, I could throw everybody could throw out names, and I can throw out names. I mean, the most obvious name is John Gruden, right? Uh, John Gruden, who we talked about last week, the Saints, you know, met with him in Tampa when the Saints played down there in Week 17. And Gruden's a guy who we all know by now coached Derek Carr for three seasons in with the Raiders, and they were they were Carr's most productive seasons of his career. So if you have an opportunity, as we've talked about, to maximize Derek Carr, the hundred million dollar investment you made in Derek Carr, then yeah, I can understand that. With John Gruden, there's also the question about. You know, the reason for which he was fired with the Raiders. Uh, is he going to be welcomed back into the NFL in, in that capacity? So I think Gruden is an obvious name to mention. And I, I don't know if the Saints play. It's sort of the word prior was, would the Saints be interested in in hiring John Gruden or would he just sort of be in an analyst, you know, sort of assistant offensive coach type role? That's... I, I, I don't have the answer to it, but Gruden's an obvious one to mention. Um, you know, Ronald Curry is another name, a guy that's on staff that is clearly going to get a lot of run. You know, Curry is currently the Saints passing game quarter, coordinator and the quarterback's coach. He's been in New Orleans uh, since 2016 now. You know, and he's worked his way up from an offensive assistant. And, and remember, in the preseason this year, the 
the Saints, uh, it was an interesting they did in the preseason games. They let the other guys take turns calling plays. So Curry, while he hasn't been a play caller, did have that opportunity in the preseason early this year. And remember last year he coached in the Senior Bowl as well. So there's something to be said for, look, I mean, you got to have a first time to have your first opportunity. So maybe this is it for Ronald Curry. I, I don't know, but he'll certainly be a name that you hear. And then there's always going to be guys who are affiliated with other organizations that um, that you try to pluck some of their success in the same way that uh, you know, Mike McDaniel being hired by the Dolphins was sort of trying to pluck from the Shanahan coaching tree, which makes a lot of sense. And you know, all those guys were on staff together, Washington with McVay and everything. So, I mean, you, you can look at at those coaching trees. You, know, you could look at at Zach Robinson, you know, with um, with the Rams, who's their passing game coordinator. I, I think you know Clint Kubiak is probably another name that you're going to hear a lot, and not just for for the New Orleans coaching job, but for any. I mean, Clint Kubiak right now is the 49ers passing coordinator, passing game coordinator, and they're in the postseason. So, I, it, it's unlikely that you would be able to even interview interview Kubiak until the the 49ers season came to an end, but. He's been a coordinator already. He was the coordinator in Minnesota there with Kirk Cousins, and you know Cousins in 2021 with the Vikings had a great season. You know the 33 touchdowns, seven interceptions, threw for over 4,200 yards. Well, that's that was Clint Kubiak calling the plays. That's Gary Kubiak's son. That you could probably imagine. So you know those are some of the names that you're gonna hear um, initially, and those are the names that are probably gonna be up for every every job. Um, you know the guys who are gonna be up for coordinator positions as you start to stair step through the professional ranks, but. Uh, it's going to be a new day in New Orleans, as we know, and um, you know whoever is next is going to have a, a tall task because you're probably coming into a situation with a coach that feels like a lame duck coach. If the Saints don't dramatically improve next year, Dennis Allen's probably out, and whoever he brings in is probably out with him. So how desirable is that job to begin with? It's a, it's a fair question to ask. So we'll keep an eye on it uh, here in Hour 3. We'll, we'll get Jeff Duncan's thoughts as well on who he thinks the Saints – should or might hire, but um, for the first time in a long time, Saints are looking for a, uh, a new offensive coordinator. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.